Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. I'm Fredicia Leibert. Chair of the Nevis COVID-19 Task Force, Dr. Judy Nisbet, is making a plea to persons to respect the privacy of patients. She made the call at the Nevis COVID-19 EOC debrief on Monday, April 13th. Our last positive test was reported six days ago. And there's something I would like to say about this, and that is to appeal to persons to respect the privacy of others. It is totally unnecessary and in poor taste for persons to be circulating pictures of persons. It is, I find, an irresponsible use of social media. I encourage persons to use social media in a more positive way and to lift others up and not to discriminate. The Nevis COVID-19 EOC debrief aims to update the public on the situation with regards to the new coronavirus on the island. Some of the backlog of tests have been cleared and over the weekend we received 16 test results, all of which are negative and as a result the number of pending tests um, is now down to 14. So we have had 71 tests performed so far. 53 of these tests are negative. The positive tests remain at four, and I want to say that all four persons continue to do well, and they're currently symptom-free. 78 persons are quarantined, currently and we have released 122 persons from quarantine so far. Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Judy Nisbet. Persons who qualify for the COVID-19 Emergency Relief Fund will receive the assistance shortly. That is according to Deputy Director of the St. Christopher and Nevis Social Security Board, Vernal Powell. The Social Security Board recognize that we are living presently in tumultuous time and has set aside a grant of $15 million to be paid to affected persons. The grant is up to $1,000. It does not mean that everyone would get $1,000. If you have reduced hours, uh, you would be paid the difference. For instance, if you, on a monthly basis, with your reduced hours, get $500, so it's good to pay an additional $500. But of course, as time will go by, we could provide all of the details. Full-time and part-time employees who have been laid off, who are employed but with reduced hours, who are made redundant as a result of the pandemic, and who are registered self-employed persons whose income is impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic can apply for the COVID-19 Relief Fund. Affected persons who wants to apply for the relief could obtain the form from Social Security website, which is www.socialsecurity.kn, or from the Labor Department, or if any time our office is open, uh, you could collect a form from us. Uh, for those who qualify for the, the relief fund uh, regarding COVID-19, it is the expectation of Social Security to make that payment on the 20th of April and the 20th every month thereafter. Uh, it, remember, it will be paid for three months, April, May, and June. Persons who have questions or concerns relating to the COVID-19 Relief Fund should contact the St. Christopher and Nevis Social Security Board at 667-2535, the Department of Labor on St. Kitts at 662-2075, or the Department of Labor in Nevis at 762-1099. The Nevis Air and Seaports Authority, NASPA, continues to offer its services to the public. According to NASPA General Manager Oral Brandy, persons can clear cargo at NASPA's facility from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. on partial curfew days. While we are open to all customers, we encourage persons to visit the port for the clearance of their cargo only if such goods are urgently needed. Or alternatively, you may use an agent or broker. It's important that we allow those essential businesses and service entities to have their commodities cleared and delivered. 
kindly note that NASPA will not charge rental or storage fees for cargo during the restrictive days and weeks. During the April 13th Nevis COVID-19 EOC briefing, Brandy also gave an update on NASPA's other areas of cargo operations. Vessels would be worked, that is, offloaded or loaded on arrival, even late into the night. This is necessary for the critical continuous flow of cargo in the region in times like these. As I indicated earlier, it is of utmost importance that food, cleaning, and medical supplies are delivered in a timely manner. We still accommodate air cargo carriers such as FedEx, DHL, and Coastal Air at the airport. Meantime, NASPA continues to facilitate inter-island travel only in the event of emergencies. Where passengers are concerned, the airport, Orly Water Taxi Facility, and the Charlestown Port are closed to passenger movements, except for emergency or medical reasons as per the COVID-19 regulations. However, anyone who performs an essential service, or if you believe that you have a very good reason to travel within or outside of the Federation, permission must first be sought from the police commissioner or attorney general, as the case may be. The port will only assist or facilitate your movement if such permission was received. General Manager of the Nevis Air and Seaports Authority, Oral Brandy. Still to come. Everybody can use this app and get engaged. It's a very simple way. It'll just take you a few minutes, two, three minutes or five minutes to go in. The details right after this break. Health app was launched on Thursday, April 9th during the Nevis COVID-19 EOC debrief. Shub Singh, founder and chief executive officer of the Neo Fields Technologies, went into some detail of the uses and importance of the Nevis Health app. Uh, you can also report that you're ill, uh, you're not experiencing any life-threatening symptoms. If you continue with that, it asks you about a standard set of uh, uh, symptoms. So let's say if someone's running a, a, temp a slight temperature and they have a mild cough and or shortness of breath 
And if you report it, once again, the app has an intelligent computer algorithm, which is monitoring these and it shows them to you. Uh, and will advise you that you can call up the hospital or other ways uh, you can get help or, or uh, the actions you should take. And with that simple action, what happens is uh, that you report your health condition and, and the Nevis Island administration is able to collect the health condition of everyone across the island. And that allows them to get the population scale analytics and an assessment of the situation. So just in case, you know, uh, it, the, the infection is spreading, there's a pocket of people in some area of the island who are starting to get a respiratory infection. Uh, the government will be enabled. They'll know that they can take action, that they can uh, go into that neighborhood and help you self-isolate and get the healthcare required. On the other hand, if everybody's reporting they're fine uh, and they're not ill, then we know at, a, at the scale of the island that the population is in good standing and the pandemic is, is, is in control and it is not having an impact. Singh is encouraging citizens and residents to download and use the Nevis Health app. Everybody can use this app and get engaged. It's a very simple way. It'll just take you a few minutes, two, three minutes or five minutes to go in and, and report your health condition or report the health condition of your family members. But that can be so valuable because that information will be collected uh, by the Nevis Island administration and they will be able to help you while you're at home and monitor the island and take action as required in response to the pandemic. Plans are in place to ensure the continued learning of the students of both primary and secondary schools here on Nevis. This is according to Principal Education Officer in the Department of Education, Zanella Claxton. We released a joint statement from Dr. Debbie Isaac, the Chief Education Officer in St. Kitts, and myself, Zanella Claxton, Principal Education Officer here on Nevis, in which we alerted parents to the existence of the Flow Study Platform. The Flow Study Platform is a free platform and it's offered by Flow, and that release came out uh, about two weeks ago. However, the Ministry of Education has created unique usernames and passwords for all students in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, and that means public and private school students, primary and secondary. Claxton was speaking during a Nevis COVID-19 debrief held on Monday, April 13th. She also spoke about the learning materials that will be made available to the students. During the course of this week, the principals and teachers from the various schools will be disseminating those usernames and passwords and they have a system through which they will do it. So please remain connected to our Facebook page, Ministry of Education Nevis, as well as the individual Facebook pages for your child or ward school. We also released the teacher FAQs and those are just questions that teachers may have for the Ministry of Education as we draw closer to the start of the new school term and as the vacation period what, what gets to the point of, of closure. Please note that the teachers and students are still on vacation and so we will be contacting them shortly as we transition into the new school term. Principal Education Officer Zanella Claxton. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I'm Freddie Silibird. Thank you for viewing.